Yo, what's up guys? It's Noah here, uh, and in today's video, I'm going to be breaking down the NBA slate on DraftKings for uh, Tuesday, March the 21st. Uh, once again, for today, we have another six-game slate, so, um, you know, as always, guys, we're going to go game by game, talk through each one of these six games, give you guys an early preview of the slate, what I do like, taking a first look on uh, Monday night. But as always, before we do get started with the breakdown, if you guys enjoy these DFS videos, if they do help you out, make sure you hit that like button down below, hit that subscribe button if you have not yet, and if you guys are new to the channel, if you've never checked out Price Picks before, Price Picks is the sponsor of this video. Um, you guys can actually sign up for Price Picks and use my promo code, promo code NOAH. Um, if you look at the bottom of the screen, when you sign up for Price Picks with my promo code, you'll get your first deposit matched up to $100. And for those of you that have never heard about Price Picks, they are a player prop site. So really simple, easy to use. Uh, you're just taking more or less on a player's projection. Um, you can see some of the props that they do already have posted. For uh, Tuesday's games, you can see if there's if anything that stands out to you. Again, you're just taking more or less on a player's projection. You have to make at least two picks, but you can make up to six picks, and you can win up to 25x your money on prize picks. Um, and they do also offer a lot of other sports outside of just NBA. You can mix and match sports. You can make some multi-sport entries. Um, it's a lot of fun. You guys definitely need to be playing over there. If you're not on prize picks yet, use that code NOAH. When you sign up, get your first deposit matched up to $100. Uh, but let's go ahead and talk through um, Tuesday's six-game slate. We'll start off with the first game of the night, the Wizards and the Magic. We'll start off on the Magic side. So uh, for Orlando today, uh, really the only injury news to talk about here is that Jalen Suggs is out once again for Orlando. Um, and we have seen with Jalen Suggs out kind of more minutes for, for Cole Anthony. He's kind of been like the biggest beneficiary. Um, you know, a little bit more playing time maybe for a guy like Gary Harris. But I think Cole Anthony is the guy that really bit, uh, benefits there. But we'll start off at the top with, um, you know, for Orlando, I'll start off with Paulo Bencaro. So Paulo Bencaro is coming in at 7,200. I think this is a, you know, pretty decent matchup against Washington for Bencaro. Now, Bencaro, we haven't seen like a massive ceiling from him. Like, you know, best games lately have been like in the low 40s in DK points. You know, he put up 49 against Charlotte, but that was like, you know, over like three weeks ago. We haven't seen like Ben Carroll really go out there and put up like massive games, like 50, 55 DK points. Obviously, at 7,200, he doesn't have to put up 50, but you kind of want that upside. And Ben Carroll really hasn't shown that upside this season, but I think the matchup is pretty good here. I think he's a playable option at 7,200. Uh, Markel Fultz has been playing really well lately. He is 7K, though. I think his price tag is starting to get to a point where you know he doesn't really stand out to me. Um, he's playable still, but you know not a guy that I'm super interested in, 7K. Uh, Wendell Carter Jr., another guy that's been playing really well lately. His price tag has also kind of come up, though, to 6900 Honestly, if I was going to roster any of these Magic guys, like uh, Wendell Carter Jr., uh, Franz Wagner, Markel Foles, Ben Carroll, I think Ben Carroll would be the guy I would look to first there. Um, and then I do want to mention Cole Anthony. So Cole Anthony's kind of been the guy really benefiting without Jalen Suggs. His minutes have been pretty good. And Cole Anthony has been a productive player on a point-per-minute basis this season. Now, his price tag is slowly getting up there. He's 5900 now, but we saw him play 28 minutes last game. He did close last game. I think we're going to get close to 30 minutes once again from Cole Anthony. He should average close to, if not over, a fancy point per minute. The price tag at 5900 feels about right. I don't think Anthony's like a glaring play today. Like, I don't think he's a clear value or anything, but he is definitely, I would say, one of my favorite plays from the Magic. I think him and Ben Caro are the two guys I, I like most here. Really nothing else, though, on Orlando is going to be viable, I don't think. So let's talk about the other side of this game now with Washington and for the Wizards today, uh, no Kyle Kuzma. So without Kyle Kuzma, we can expect you know Bradley Beal and Chris S. Porzingis to really dominate the usage. Um, Kuzma, or without Kuzma, we should see um, Corey Kispert start. I think Kispert did start the last game that Kuzma was out. Um, or He started maybe the last game that Porzingis was out, but usually they go with um, either Kispert or Avia. It's been Kispert, though, getting the starts you know whenever somebody's out. So I would expect Kispert starts in place of Kuzma. Kispert, not a great permanent producer. He's cheap, but not a guy I have a ton of interest in today. Uh, definitely favorite plays on Washington are Porzingis and Beal. Um, you match up against Orlando, I think it's fine. Porzingis is going to have great usage here. The minutes should be really good as long as this game is competitive. Um, and again, without Kuzma, we can expect the usage to just be really concentrated around Porzingis and Beal. Um, honestly, I think you could play both these guys together. I think they both look like pretty solid options here. If I had to pick one of the two, I think I would slightly lean with Porzingis over Beal. Uh, both guys are very appealing today. And then the rest of the Wizards, Daniel Gafford, I think his minutes become a little bit more secure without Porzingis, or excuse me, without Kuzma. His minutes have kind of been all over the place lately, but I think he probably gets like mid-20s minutes. He's playable, but not a guy that I'm like in love with. Uh, Denny Avia, though, is a guy that I do have quite a bit of interest in. We've seen Denny Avia be really good on a permanent basis this season. He's a guy that can rebound really well. He can kind of do a little bit of everything when he's on the floor. And I would think without Kuzma, 
He's going to come off the bench, but he should still play close to 30 minutes. He's a good permanent producer. At 5K in a pretty good matchup against Orlando, I definitely have interest in Denny Avia today. Um, I would say behind Porzingis and Beal, he's my third favorite play on the Wizards. And that's really it for Washington. Nothing else looks appealing here. So let's go ahead and move on to the next game, Detroit and Atlanta. We'll start off on the Atlanta side. So for Atlanta today, some big news here with DeJounte Murray questionable. Um, this is obviously kind of slate-altering news because if DeJounte Murray is out, we can expect a massive, massive role for Trey Young. I think Trey Young would be arguably the best payup option on the slate if DeJounte Murray got ruled out. The matchup is fantastic against Detroit. Detroit's defense has been horrible this season. They've been a great matchup for point guards. I know Young has had some success in this matchup this season. He's averaged 54 DK points through three games against Detroit, and you know those games were with DeJounte Murray. If DeJounte's out, I think Trey's a great play today. If DeJounte plays, I still think Trey's viable. He just wasn't. He wouldn't look as appealing. And then if DeJounte is able to play, I mean, it's a great matchup for him as well. He's been kind of inconsistent this season, but he did have a big game last game against San Antonio. He's been playing massive minutes lately. The matchup's obviously great. Um, I think DeJounte's fine as well if he's able to go. Now, the rest of Atlanta, I don't like too much else here. Um, I think Clint Capella is in a pretty favorable matchup. Detroit's been giving up a lot of points in the paint this season. Capella's minutes, though, have kind of been the tricky part. Like, he doesn't really offer a big minute ceiling unless... Unless, like, Onyeka Kongu gets in foul trouble or something, you're probably only getting 25 to 28 minutes from Capella, but we have seen him be productive, especially in good matchups. I think this is a pretty good matchup against Detroit. I don't mind Capella at 5,800. I think he's playable. John Collins, his minutes have been a little bit more secured lately, but I think his price tag at 5,400 feels about right. And there's really nothing else on Atlanta that looks super appealing. I will say that if DeJounte is out, you would definitely see more usage for a guy like John Collins. So I think Collins would definitely look more appealing if DeJounte's out. I think DeAndre Hunter would look a little bit more appealing. And then Bogdan Bogdanovich, I would like quite a bit if DeJounte's out. Bogdan would probably play high 20s minutes off the bench. He should be really productive when he's out there, especially when he's not playing with Trey Young. Um, so I think he would be a guy that we could look to for value uh, in a scenario where you know DeJounte doesn't play today. Now, on the other side with Detroit, Detroit, once again, going to you know, be pretty shorthanded here. No Bojan Bogdanovic, no Jalen Duran, no Isaiah Stewart, uh, you know, Hamadou Diallo, Alec Burks, those guys are still out. And then I think RJ Hampton is questionable, and I think Isaiah Livers is questionable too. So we'll have to wait and see like what Detroit's starting lineup is. But I think without you know Jalen Duran, without Isaiah Stewart, we can expect pretty good minutes for both James Wiseman and Marvin Bagley. Those should be the guys that really get all the minutes at center, um, and they should probably play alongside each other as well. Wiseman's minutes have been really good lately, 30 and 33 minutes the last two games. Um, he was productive last game, even in a tough matchup against Miami. I think this matchup against Atlanta is obviously much better, so I don't mind Wiseman today at 6,400. Like He has shown the permitted upside to be able to outperform the salary when he's playing over 30 minutes. And then Marvin Bagley, they did kind of, or they said they were going to keep his minutes in check last game, but he played 30 minutes. Um, I would assume he plays pretty good minutes here. I would assume he plays more than 30 minutes today, especially since they don't have Duran now. So I think Bagley looks pretty solid at 6,300 as well. Um, I would like him more if he starts. I'm guessing he'll start. And then the rest of Detroit, like Killian Hayes and Jaden Ivey, they both feel priced correctly at 6,700 and 6,500. I'm not as interested in them. Rodney McGruder has been having some big games lately, but... At 5700 like it really feels like you're paying the max price for McGruder right now. He's just not a guy that I would really ever pay this price tag for. I know he's had 45 and 35 DK points the last two games, but 5700 for a guy like McGruder that only averages like 0.7, if that, like 0.7 fantasy points per minute, he's just not worth the salary. And then, you know, the rest of Detroit, Isaiah Livers, if he plays, I'll pass on. The rest of, you know, these guys I'm pretty much going to pass on too. So I think that does it for the Pistons. And for this game, let's go ahead and talk about the next game, Cleveland and Brooklyn. So for Brooklyn today, you know, Brooklyn, they're a team right now. They're running a really, really tight rotation. They're playing their starters really big minutes. We're seeing Spencer Dinwiddie, Mikael Bridges, Cam Johnson, Nick Claxton. Those four guys are playing big, big minutes on a nightly basis. And then, you know, Royce O'Neal's getting minutes off the bench. Um, you know, Seth Curry's playing some minutes off the bench. And then after that, it's just kind of been like a, a little bit of minutes for Cam Thomas, a little bit of minutes for Joe Harris. Some of these, a lot of these other guys haven't even been playing. Uh, Dorian Finney-Smith is questionable for today, so we will need to monitor this. Obviously, Dorian Finney-Smith is not like a high usage player, so him being out doesn't really, it's not going to make anyone be more productive, but it definitely should open up more minutes because he has been playing a good amount of minutes lately. So I would think if Dorian Finney-Smith is out, the guy that would start would probably be Royce O'Neal. So at 4,600, if Royce O'Neal draws the start, he's definitely a viable, cheap option. Royce O'Neal never been a great per minute producer, but he probably would play big minutes here if he does start. I think he would be a playable value. But the main Brooklyn guys, Dinwiddie, Bridges, Claxton, Johnson, 
I mean, they're just playing so many minutes right now. As long as this game is competitive, we can expect close to 40 minutes for Dinwiddie and Bridges. We can expect mid to high 30s minutes for Claxton and Johnson. You know, Dinwiddie's 8,500. Bridges is 7,800. I think given those price tags, Bridges is probably the guy that I would rather go to. Um, you know, Bridges has kind of been a little bit underperforming lately these last few games, but um, he's kind of had some tougher matchups against Denver, against Sacramento. Obviously, this matchup against Cleveland is not great. But again, Bridges has had a great role since he's been with Brooklyn. He's been playing massive minutes. He's going to have great usage here. The matchup's not great, but again, I think usage outweighs matchup in my opinion. So I'm definitely interested in Bridges as a tournament play. Um, Nick Claxton's been playing big minutes lately. He's a great permanent producer. The matchup against Cleveland is not that great, but again, Claxton's one of these guys that has shown that he can put up good games even in tough matchups. I mean, he had 34 DK points against Denver last game, um, 37 against Denver. I mean, that's not a good matchup by any means going up against Jokic, so... I definitely think Claxton's a playable option. Cam Johnson at 6,400 definitely feels priced where he should be. Uh, Spencer Dinwiddie at 8,500 uh, probably feels priced where he should be. And nothing else on Brooklyn looks very appealing. And then on the other side of this game with Cleveland, only news to monitor here is Jared Allen's status. And Jared Allen, I think he did practice. He was a full participant in practice on Monday. So I'm guessing, I'm guessing Jared Allen will be back for this game. And he was out with an eye injury. So I would assume he's going to play full minutes. I don't think he's going to have like any minutes restriction given that it wasn't like a leg injury or anything so if Allen plays today I expect him to be full go he's only 6200 and we've seen centers do really well against Brooklyn this season they've had you know they've been giving up a lot of big games to bigs lately so I think Jared Allen you know at 6200 looks pretty appealing today and he would probably be my favorite play on the Cavs um, but there's nothing else I really love on Cleveland Donovan Mitchell feels priced about right at 8,800. Not the best matchup for him against a pretty solid defensive team that, you know, a Brooklyn defensive team that does have some good defenders. Same with Mobley and, and Garland. You know, these guys, kind of similar to the Brooklyn guys, you know, these Cleveland guys are going to play big minutes if they're not, if it's a game, uh, or if the game is competitive, but their price tags feel about right to me. Um, if I had to rank them, I probably would say probably Mitchell first, then Garland, then Mobley. Uh, but again, I think my favorite play on Cleveland is Jared Allen if he plays. I think 6,200 in this matchup for Jared Allen does feel a little bit too cheap. Um, and that's really it for Cleveland. Nothing else stands out here. So let's go ahead and move on to the next game, the Spurs and the Pelicans. We'll start off on the Pelicans side. So for the Pelicans today, the only news here I think is that uh, you know Zion's out. Really nothing else to, to monitor here. So without Zion, once again, we can expect a big role for Brandon Ingram and CJ McCollum. And this matchup against San Antonio is really, really good. San Antonio has been a terrible defensive team this year. They play at a fast pace. So I think both Ingram and McCollum look really solid today. Now, as of late, Ingram's kind of been the guy, you know, taking on a lot of the usage, playing the big, big minutes. McCollum hasn't been, like, as productive on a permanent basis, but the matchup is so good for these guys that I, I think it's very likely that one of Ingram or McCollum does well here. I would side with Ingram if I had to choose between the two, but McCollum is fine at 8K. Um, he finally had a good game last game after, you know, a couple poor games before that. He hasn't shown like as big of a ceiling as Brandon Ingram has, but I still think McCollum at 8K is definitely in play today. Um, and then the rest of the, the Pelicans, I mean, Jonas Valanciunas, like what do we do with Jonas, Jonas Valanciunas? So he plays like four games, seven minutes, 16 minutes, 21 minutes, 16 minutes, and then back-to-back -back games, 33 minutes and 34 minutes. It's like, I have no idea. This matchup against San Antonio is fantastic. This is a matchup that Jay Val should be able to dominate in. The only issue is that, like, you just have no idea how many minutes this guy's going to play. He could play 35. He could play 20. There's a very, very large range of outcomes with Jay Val. So I think my interest in him would definitely depend on his his ownership. Um, if he's going to be very popular, I'll just fade him and just hope this is a game that he plays 20 minutes. But if nobody's going to play Jay Val, if he does get 35 minutes again and nobody plays him, I mean, he could absolutely smash here in a great matchup. So Definitely want to see what his ownership is, what, what ownership projection he has. But I think J-Val in tournaments makes a lot of sense today if he's low-owned. If he's high-owned, probably would be fine fading him. And then the rest of the Pelicans, I just I don't see much interest in guys like Trey Murphy and Herb Jones where they're priced at. Nothing else stands out here. So let's go ahead and talk about the other side of this game now with the Spurs. And the Spurs are a team that we are going to be heavily targeting today. It, you know, it's not it's never fun to really heavily target the Spurs, but they're super short-handed. No Demasell, no uh, Zach Collins, Trey Jones is doubtful, no Jeremy Sohan, and then Devontae Graham and um, I think, yeah, Devontae Graham and Doug McDermott are both questionable. Or, uh, McDermott's probable, but Devontae Graham's questionable, and they don't have Charles Bassey either. So I'm not exactly sure what the starting lineup is going to be for San Antonio. I think it'll definitely be Keldon Johnson, um, Mamu Kalashvili should start, Malachi Branham should start, KBD should start, and then I think if Devontae Graham plays, he'll probably start. So it'll probably be Graham. Branham, um, KBD, 
Keldon, and then Mamu. That I think that'll be the five starters. If Graham doesn't play, then I'm assuming it would probably be like Wesley or Langford that starts. So, you know, Keldon Johnson is going to have a really big role here without Vassell, without Trey Jones, without Sohan. You know, Keldon has not shown like a massive upside this season, but he is coming off one of his best games of the season against Atlanta. Last game, put up 54 DK points. Um, he's kind of been like a, a high floor guy this year, but he's not, again, not shown a massive ceiling. But the usage here should be great. He's going to take a ton of shots here. As long as San Antonio keeps this game competitive, you would think Keldon's going to be probably one of the reasons why. So I think Keldon at 7,400 looks pretty solid today. Um, and the rest of the Spurs, I mean, there's a lot to like here. There's going to be a lot of value here. Malachi Branham should play a lot of minutes here without, you know, Trey Jones um, and without Denver Sale. So I think at 5,100, he looks pretty solid. If Devontae Graham plays, I like him a lot at 5K. It's a revenge game for him against the Pelicans, and we've seen Devontae Graham be pretty good as a starter this season in the game that he has started. And when he gets like 30-plus minutes, he can easily outperform a 5K price tag. So if Devontae Graham plays, I like him a ton. And then I think Mamu Kajvili looks like a really good value. Um, last time Zach Collins was out, Mamu did start at center. It was this game against Dallas. He played 33 minutes in that game. He had 22 draftings points. Wasn't the greatest game overall, but... He's been playing good minutes as kind of the backup for Collins, and now with Collins out, I think we can pencil in Mamu for 30-plus minutes here. I think he might even be blowout-proof. Like, he might even play in a blowout. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I think he does get 28 to 30 minutes most likely as long as he you know, avoids foul trouble. He's only 4,200. He's a good permanent producer. I think Mamu looks like a pretty good value play today. I made him the thumbnail for today's video. I, I definitely have interest in him. And then the rest of these Spurs guys, I think my interest in these guys like Langford and Wesley would de depend on if they're starting or not. I do want to talk about KBD. I think KBD will start here. And if KBD is starting, we've seen KBD be pretty good in the games he has started this season. He's very cheap at 3,700. I think he's going to be a pretty good value, assuming he is in the starting lineup. So a lot to keep an eye on here. Obviously, their starting lineup is going to be very important today, but there's going to be value to go to from the Spurs. You know, it's not fun to roster a bunch of Spurs guys just because they, they're not a good team. They get blown out a lot. They can run a deep rotation, but there's just so many guys out today, and there's so much value here that you're going to have to look to some of these uh, San Antonio guys. But that'll do it for that game. Let's move on to the next game, Boston and Sacramento. Uh, so Sacramento, they're on the second night of a back-to-back, -back, and it's not the best spot here going up against the Celtics. So I don't really like too much on Sacramento. DeMont Sabonis in a tough matchup. You know, the Celtics are getting back Al Horford and Robert Williams for this game. So probably going to pass on Sabonis today. Fox, I don't love the matchup for him either, but his price tag is pretty low at 8300 If I was going to roster one of those two Kings guys, I would rather take the $2,000 savings and play Fox over Sabonis. But nothing else on Sacramento looks that great. Um, Kevin Herter was out again on Monday, so we'll have to see if he plays Tuesday. The guy that's really been benefiting has been Malik Monk and Keegan Murray. Keegan Murray's actually had some good games lately. He had a really good game last game against Washington with Monk out, or excuse me, with Herter out, and I'm pretty sure he's having another good game on Monday night against the Jazz with Herter out. So I think if Herter's out, Keegan Murray gets a big boost and would definitely be in play uh, for value. I think Monk would be playable too. Nothing else on Sacramento looks pretty appealing or looks that appealing though. Um, honestly, you know, I don't really want to be rostering many Kings here on a back-to-back -back in a tough matchup against Boston. Now, on the other side of this game with the Celtics, it's a much better matchup for these guys going up against Sacramento. Sacramento's been playing fast this season. Their defense has not been that great. I think it's a really good spot for both Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. Um, I never have an issue going to either one of these guys. I would not play them together, but I think going to one of the two does make some sense. If I had to pick, I think I would lean Tatum over Brown. Um, but I think there's plenty of upside for both these guys. They're going to play big minutes if this game's close. Sacramento plays fast, so this is a big-time pace-up spot for the uh, for the Celtics. And again, the matchup's really good. So I'm interested in both Tatum and Brown. But the guards, like White, Brogdon, I'll pass on these guys. Smart, I think I'll pass on too. I mean, Smart is kind of cheap at 5,300. But man, when, he, when he's playing with Tatum and with Brown and with Brogdon and all these other guys healthy, we just haven't seen that big of a ceiling from Marcus Smart. It feels like best case scenario, he's given you like 30 draft kicks points, which honestly at 5,300 is not that appealing. Um, but, you know, he's playable in a good matchup. I don't mind going there. And then Al Horford, you know, with Williams back, I'll pass on. Robert Williams is really cheap, but he's been out for a while. So I'm assuming that he'll probably be on a minutes limit today. Don't think he's really going to be viable for DFS. Um, so that does it for that game. Let's go ahead and move on to the last game of the night, the Lakers and the Clippers. Or excuse me, not the Lakers, the Thunder and the Clippers, excuse me. So we'll start off on the Clippers side and Looking at okay or looking at the the Clippers today, um, you know Kawhi and PG both in a pretty good matchup here against OKC. OKC's defense been pretty solid this season, but OKC has been playing at a really fast pace. So I think this game does have potential to be really high scoring. 
Between the two, between Kawhi and PG, I usually always prefer Kawhi when they're closely priced and only a $200 difference between the two today. I think I'd rather go to Kawhi if I was going to choose one of these guys. You know, Kawhi's going to play massive, massive minutes here if the game's competitive. The matchup against OKC, like he, he might be guarded by Lou Dort, but I mean, Kawhi has shown that he's a matchup proof player and he can put up a big game in any spot. So I definitely think Kawhi looks solid today. I think Paul George is playable too. Westbrook had a pretty good game last game, um, but again, I think that would get, or he's had a couple good, good games lately. Uh, the game against Orlando, that was without Kawhi. Last game against Portland, Kawhi played in. Westbrook played 34 minutes in that one. I mean, Westbrook's minutes have been trending up lately. Do they continue to trend up? I really don't know. I mean, we've kind of seen Westbrook's minutes be all over the place this season, but it's a revenge game against OKC. You know, I think Westbrook, if he does get 30 plus minutes, he has the upside to pay off this 7,100 hour salary. I'm just not confident that he gets 30 plus minutes. We've seen his minutes kind of be all over the place uh, since he's joined the Clippers. And then the rest of these Clippers guys, I don't have a ton of interest in, but I do want to say that against OKC, this is a good matchup for centers. So I don't mind the spot for Vika Zubak. And Zubak's another guy that has played pretty good minutes lately. He's also been very productive. 30, 27, 34 minutes the last three games, 45, 40, 33 drafting points. He definitely seems to have the upper hand on the center minutes over Mason Plumlee right now. Plumlee, I think, has like barely been playing. He's just been playing like 12 to 14 minutes. So I don't mind going to Zubak here in a really good matchup. I think he's more of a tournament play, but I definitely think he is viable at 5,900. And then the rest of the Clippers, again, I'll pass on. Now on the other side of this game with OKC, you got SGA coming in at 9,800. I think it's a it's a really good spot for SGA if you know if the if the Clippers put Russell Westbrook on him. We've seen point guards do really well against the Clippers because Westbrook's defense has just been really bad, but I have a feeling you're probably going to see one of Paul George or Kawhi guard SGA here, and I don't think that's as good of a matchup, but SGA's been playing huge minutes lately. He's just been aggressive offensively, taking 20-plus shots a game. It's a revenge game for him as well, so I think SGA as a payup option is totally fine to go to today. I don't have an issue with him. Giddy at 7600 it feels priced about right, not as interested in him. Same with Jalen Williams. He feels priced about right. Same with Lou Dort. Really, the only guy that I'm interested in from OKC is SGA. I don't think there's anything else I'm super interested in here. Um, I know Jalen Williams, the center, has had some decent games lately. But again, on a slate like this, I feel like there's other values I'd rather target. Like, I'd rather go to the Spurs value plays over a guy like Jalen Williams, I think. So that'll do it for that game, guys. That'll do it for this six-game Tuesday slate. I hope you guys, as always, enjoyed this video. I appreciate you watching. Make sure you hit that like button down below. Before you guys do get, out, uh, do get out of here, hit that subscribe button if you have not yet. And if you're new to the channel, go check out Prize Picks, sponsor of the video. You guys can sign up for Prize Picks. You can use my promo code, promo code NOLA. You'll get your first deposit matched up to $100 uh, when you sign up for Prize Picks with my promo code. So check them out if you have not yet. Um, we did hit both of our two plays we gave out in Monday's Prize Picks video. Hopefully, you guys watched that video. You tailed the plays I gave out then. Um, I'll have another another video posted for prize picks for Tuesday. Uh, that'll probably either go up late Monday night or sometime you know Tuesday morning. So check that out. If you already play on prize picks, you want some plays to tail, I do post those daily or at least you know Monday through Friday on this YouTube channel. Um, and again, if you're not on prize picks, sign up, use that code NOAA, get your first deposit matched up to $100. But that's all that I got for tonight, guys. Wish you the best of luck on this six-game slate. Hopefully we can all win some money tonight, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.